What is up everyone? Welcome back to this episode of Home Build Workshop. Today I'm going to replace this crusty piece of MDF that I use on top of my table saw to do most of my work on. Now in case you guys can't tell by the videos, my shop is super tiny. I do not have a lot of room to do a lot of work, so I have to make use of the space that I have. Now to me, the table saw is one of the most important things to have in the workshop. Mine is really small, but to maximize the working space that I have, I have this piece of MDF. It's about a two by four foot piece of MDF that I just sit on top of the saw and it works really well for me to do a lot of my work on assembly and glue ups and pretty much every video you see me do something on this piece of MDF. But this thing is getting really beat up, especially since I did the bench. If you haven't seen that video, link down below and a card. Since I built that bench, I had a lot of epoxy drip off on this thing and I tried to chip some of it off and I was able to get some out of there, but it left some gouges and dings on top of what was already there. The corners, everything's getting beat up and it's really not that sturdy. It's just a piece of, I think it's 5 8 or 3 quarter inch MDF. It's not that sturdy, but I want to replace it and make something that's a little bit more useful. I'm going to use these off cuts of 3 quarter inch plywood to make the new work surface. I'm going to keep the size about the same as my current one. It's about a 2 by 4 which this piece happens to be, but the other piece is a little bit larger. So the first thing I need to do is cut these down to size. Since these pieces are kind of large, it's going to be easier for me to make these cuts outside. Now I'll just apply what we'll call a liberal amount of glue. Who needs that lid? Now I'll just put this other half on the top. Give it the old wiggle. Make sure the glue is evenly spread. Line up the edges. Start clamping it down. And I'll just find some heavy stuff to kind of weigh down the center. <laughs> there it is! My inch and a half thick tabletop. Now I suppose if all I really needed was a work surface, I could use this just like it is, but I want this to be more than just a chunk of wood. I want it to be a little bit more versatile for a lot of projects. So I've got these four foot sections of T-Track that I ordered from Rockler. They come with some hold downs, a couple of hold downs, and you can buy this as a kit. If you're interested, I'll leave a link down below in the description. Not sponsored by them or anything, but I do like these and that's what we're gonna use. All I need to do is route a channel using a router and an edge guide. Now I'll use my miter sled and cut some maple to wrap the edge of the table. This maple that's going to wrap the top is really just some pre-cut 1x2 material from Home Depot and actually, at least at my Home Depot, you can find some pretty decent maple that's got some good flame, some figuring in it. There's been a few times I've been there and there's just some incredible pieces there. so don't necessarily discount the big box stores. If you pick through the pile, you might be able to find some stuff with some really good figure. The pieces that I picked do have some nice figuring in there, and I'll be anxious to see what it looks like when we get some finish on it. But for right now, we gotta get these things attached. I'm not just gonna glue these on, I'm gonna add some biscuits for strength. Biscuits seem like they've fallen out of touch with a lot of people lately. It used to be a really popular method for joining materials, but it just seems like for some reason that a lot of people don't use them anymore. Including myself, I haven't used these things in a long time, but I've had these biscuits and this biscuit joiner sitting around for quite a while, and I figured it worked pretty well for this application. I'm not quite sure why it is that people have moved away from these things. They work great, they're easy to use, they help hold your piece into place as you're clamping it and gluing it and give you a little bit of added strength. Now I don't know how much strength necessarily, but the reason I want to use them for this project is it'll help 
align the pieces while I'm clamping them up. So just because you don't see a lot of people using biscuits anymore, don't discount them from your project. If it works for what you need, go ahead and use them. There's absolutely nothing wrong with using these things. We'll get the band clamp on there to add a little pressure. Then I can adjust the rest. Sometimes your clamps are not long enough and you gotta get creative. I'm sure that's never happened to any of you guys. Let's see how tight this band clamp will go. You know your clamp's tight enough when you're tuned to precisely an F. Once the glue's dry, I'll use a card scraper and clean up the edges. I'm just making sure that the edges are nice and flush. Now I'll use my block plane just to lightly chamfer the edges. Hopefully this will help it not to hurt so bad when I run into the side. I've really been enjoying using a block plane to break the corners of projects lately. It has a little bit different feel than just sanding the corners round. Plus there's some level of satisfaction in getting it to come out right. These little tiny hairs from the first pass or two Kind of cool to watch them coil up inside the plane. Now I can go ahead and put a finish on. For that, I'm going to keep it really simple and just use some boiled linseed oil. Rubber gloves probably would be a good idea. Once you apply your first coat, wait about five or 10 minutes and go back and wipe off the excess. You don't want too much oil on there. It could cause the wood to be streaky or blotchy. This'll help even it out. I'm gonna end up applying probably two coats. I'm gonna wait in between each one, about 12 hours or so, reapply another coat. I'm also gonna apply this to both sides of the table because I intend to be able to flip this over and work off of either side. Also, don't forget some safety when using boiled linseed oil. Don't just throw these rags in the trash. They are highly flammable. They can spontaneously combust and ignite whatever's in the trash or your shop or home or whatever. The best thing to do is lay it out flat on a non-flammable surface. I'm gonna lay it out on the concrete near my house. There's nothing around it that can combust, so I know it'll be safe until this is dry. So let the piece sit and dry for about a day. I want to make sure that linseed oil is good and dry before I move any further. Now I'm going to install this T-Track. This part's really simple. Just drop the T-Track into place. Then I'll just secure it with some screws. Bonus question. So who spotted right away what I did wrong on this project? Because I didn't the whole entire time. I didn't test fit my T-bolts. Check this out. So the one of the intents with this project is to be able to use standard T-bolts and these cool brackets from Rockler to be able to clamp things down while I'm working on them. So all you need to do is install a T-bolt 
into the track. <laughs> I can't. They're made to slide in the end of the T-track and I wrap, wrap the end in maple. I can't get the bolts in. Never saw that coming the whole time. So let's fix it really quick. Now I believe there's at least two ways that I could solve this problem. The first would be just to cut a matching T-slot in the end of the maple and that's what I was just about to do. But I really wanted to keep the edge of this table nice and uniform and I kind of don't want to put a notch in the side. It would work and it would be completely fine and it would not affect the strength of the maple at all. But I think a better option for me in this project especially since I want to keep that maple solid, is just to notch the T-track at the very end so that I can slide a piece on from the end and then move it to where I need it. That's not really my favorite option either because I really don't want to destroy any part of the T-track, but I feel like if I do it on just the end of each one, that what are the chances that I'm really going to need that exact spot to clamp something? I think I can give up that three quarters of an inch or whatever of T-track. Problem solved. Now let's pretend that this little thing never happened. Now after getting rid of that crusty piece of MDF, got a nice little work surface here. I really like the way this turned out. Much better than that old beat up MDF was. Now just in case you're thinking that this is a little overkill for just something to sit on top of the table saw, here's one of my reasons for wanting to do a project like this. Now, eventually I'm gonna have hopefully a bigger shop with more space and now this is already done and able to be turned into an outfeed table or a small standalone assembly table all I need to do is build a set of legs some kind of a base to set this on and it's ready to go I don't have to worry about a tabletop plus it looks cool it looks way better than the MDF did I think my favorite part on the whole piece is this edge right here now whoever said that you can't find good figured wood at a big box store. Look at that. That's a really nice flame. Another thing I really like about this is it is almost dead flat. It's gonna work really good for assembling projects as I know I have an almost perfectly flat surface to work off of. I believe it's gonna be pretty stable. The plywood laminated together combined with the maple trim hopefully will hold everything together and it'll stay this flat over time we'll see though well what do you guys think how do you think it turned out leave a comment down below and let me know your thoughts one thing i'm not quite sure yet is if i want to apply a coat of paste wax originally that was my plan with this but i kind of like it as it is it feels really nice it feels like wood and i don't know i gotta think about that so let me know would you guys add paste wax Thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel so you don't miss any upcoming projects. I got some more stuff in the works that hopefully is kind of cool. So, And as always, down below, you'll find links to my social media as well as links to my website, homebuiltworkshop.com, where you can head over there, check out what's going on over that way, and get yourself a shirt and a sticker if you'd like. Hopefully more stuff coming soon in the store at homebuiltworkshop.com. So thanks a lot again, guys, for watching. I appreciate your support, and we'll see you next time. He's happy. It smells weird. It smells like nuts or something. Peanuts. <laughs> Walnuts. Really? Head of that screw's got a little nub in there. That's odd. Can't even throw in the trash can. <laughs> Is it weird wearing your own shirt? I don't know. To me, it's alright, but it's also kind of like the band.
that's playing on stage wearing their own shirt? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, not good shot. Oh! I didn't plan that one out. My clamps are too short. Once again, I should have gloves. <sighs> Don't have any. Oh well, here we go. Eye and skin irritant. Great. <laughs> Don't do as I do. Apparently I'm a terrible safety person. Ooh, it's got a little, uh, little curve into it. Yeah, that's all right. Don't forget, I have a lot of other videos for you guys to check out. You can find a few of them in the links right here. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel as well as my second channel, Inside Home Built Workshop.